Okay, so this is part two of rational exponents. So the next problem that we are going to solve is that we're going to turn this into the power of the integer. And I remember what I told you. This is basically the denominator. Do you remember that? This is the denominator. So 5 over, there's an invisible 1 here, just so you know. And that 1 goes here. So that's 1 over 5. So once you do that, you can basically do negative 6, 1 fifth. Then after that, cube it. And that is your answer in the power of an integer. Because you turn the square root into a fraction. And that fraction could be a power. Okay. Do you remember um, what I told you yesterday? of converting radicals to fractions. So if you want to watch that, just go back to part one. Okay, so that one was pretty easy. So let's go to the next one. So the next problem is the same situation. We're converting it to a power of integer, and we have four, uh, four through, uh, four, 30, negative 30. So here we do 30, negative 3 over 4. But look at this. We have a negative fractional exponent. So if we want to get rid of that, we have to flip it. Meaning we have to do 1 over 30 times 3 fourths. Right? Um, hold on. Just making sure I'm doing this correctly. Um, yes, we are. Okay. So we have a fractional exponent, and we can never have that. So remember what I told you from yesterday? You have to multiply it by another fraction with the same base that adds to a total of 1. So if we multiply both sides by 30, because they have to have the same base in order to add exponents, 1 fourth, that will equal to 1, 30, 1 fourth. So what do you do at the bottom? You have to do at the top. It's just a fractional rule. Um, so once you do that, you get 30, 1 fourth over 30. And that is your answer, because you cannot fourth root 30. So that's your answer for that question. And let's go for that question. But this one's gonna be, this one we're actually gonna be solving. Right here, we're just looking for the fourth root and we're looking for the power of integer form. Okay. So the next question is solve. For, it says use exponent radical properties to simplify. Just basically use your rules of rational exponents to solve. Basically, so cube root of 7x all to the ninth. Okay, so what we could do here is that we could distribute this actually, because this is like basically equal to 3 square root of 7x, then that whole thing is 9th. You could basically distribute that to each one. So it will be 7 9th, then x 9th, then the cube root of that. Okay, you divide this by 3, this by 3, and you get 7 cubed x cubed. Now, you can simplify this further, but I'm just going to leave my answer as that. Um, that is how you solve that. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah, pretty simple. Okay, so um, we can also do, um, let's see. I'm going to do number 10, even though I didn't think I was going to put it on the video, but I'm going to put it on. So 16 squared over 16 five-fourths. So they have the same base, but 
how can you subtract them when one's a fraction and one's not? Good question. You can actually turn it into a fraction, like this. 8 over 4, same thing. 8 over 4 is 2, so it's the same thing, so it's fine. 8 fourths minus 5 fourths is 16 3 fourths. Then, you can simplify this further by 16 1 fourths. Then, cube it at the end. 16 1 fourths, meaning what is the fourth root of 16, is 2. Then, 2 cubed is 8. And that is your solution. Okay. Um, okay. So we could do. We've got a couple more problems here. So this one's gonna take a while, just letting you know. So we have negative eight x to the power of 18 to the power of two thirds times the cube root of y to the sixth. Okay, a lot of steps to do here, but we could simplify this further. Let's turn this into radical form actually, because look at this. These, this can be cubed and this can be divided by three. You see that? So if you do that, cube root negative eight x to the eighteenth. Then remember you got a square because this is a two there. Uh, so you can either simplify this first or that. You can't really divide that by three, so I recommend you divide. You solve this first. What's the cube root of negative eight? Negative two, cube root of 18, just divided by three, six, x to the sixth. Then after that, square it. And just making sure I'm following the correct steps. I remember it being shorter than this, but I'm not sure. No, I'm right. Yeah, I'm good. So, What's negative two squared? Negative two squared is four. What's six times two? X to the 12th. Because remember when you're distributing an exponent to another exponent, you multiply them both together. Uh, we could solve this one pretty easily. Just cube root of net y six, just divide that by three. Y squared, and that is your solution, easy as that. So now our next one is what is the cube root of negative 8x to the ninth. Then after that, square. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We could solve it already. What's the cube root of negative 8, negative 2? Uh, 9 divided by 3, x to the third. Then square it. Uh, negative 4. What's the square root of negative 2? That's 4. Uh, 2 times 3, x to the 6th. And that's your answer. Going pretty through this pretty fast. So, just if you need some time, pause the video. Um, what else? Then? Okay. So, we got some new types of problems here. So, um, so you can solve this actually. Um, you actually, you cannot, but look at this. You can distribute this to 27 and three. Change this to the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 3. So, once you do that, what's the cube root of 27? The cube root of 27 is 3. So we have 3 times 3 to the 3. 
So once we do that, just leave this top as the same. Once we get that, actually, um, you can. actually multiply it by three to the two thirds. Because if you turn this into a fraction, you can multiply it by three to the two thirds. Same faces add together. Oh. Um, We'll change that if that we solve it. So once we have that, let's move that over here. We get negative six to the one third times three to the two thirds over um, three. This just turns to three times three because you multiply it by that. And that's nine. So you see here, they both have a common denominator, but they don't have the same base. So all you can do is put them under the same radical. Just one squared, one not. Okay. So um, square that. Just can't really do anything. Just solve it, see where we go from. Nine times six, actually negative six times nine is negative 54. Uh, the cube root of negative 54 is Very interesting. Very. Um, how does how does twenty seven break down to eighty one? Twenty seven times two. Hey Siri, what's 27 times three? Yeah, okay, is that correct? What's cube root of 54 though? Oh. It's two, 27 times two is actually equal to that. So you can actually break this down to 27, or negative 27, cube root of that, times two, cube root of that. Uh, you get negative three from that. I barely need space here, so just gonna have to erase that. Uh, so that's negative three, negative three on the outside, cube root of two. Over now. So you can further simplify that to negative square root of 3 into over 3. And that is your answer. Pretty good, right? Just takes a while to solve. Remember, like if something you could simplify it even more. Like if it was a square root of something, a big number, just watch out. You could simplify it to something like 27, 3, like 27, 2, like I did to the 54. Just watch out for that. Like you can multiply two numbers together and one that can be cubed or squared or any of that. Because that can really help you. And that's like the only way you could solve those. So. That's how you, the only way you could simplify it even further. Okay. 
So they're both square rooted. So that means you can simplify them both to the same number. So they both are a common multiple of three. So let's do square root of four over square root of five. Square root of four is two. Can't really do the square root of five. And that is your solution. Okay. Okay, this one's going to fix some room. Here comes the space, but we got this. Twenty-five R. Okay, so what we're going to do here? So is that for for this question? Is they both have the common denominator. So they both have one third, two third. So meaning you could simplify this. They both have the same radical, so you could simplify it. So you could take on R from the bottom, make that R one. And that's all you can really do. So now you just have the Q root of negative three R over the Q root of 25. You can never have a radical in the denominator, so you just turn it into a fraction again. So you get 25 to the one third, and then you can turn this to that also. Negative three R times one third. Then multiply a common base, two thirds to make a whole, 25 two thirds. That is now 25 over negative three R times Oh, one third times 25 two thirds. So they both have the common denominator, right? And since they both have a common denominator, you can put them both under the same radical. So if you do the same radical of Q root of negative three R times 25 squared is over 25. So we can't really, we can't really do anything here. We can't cube this. But we can simplify this even further. 25 times 25 is what? That is 120. Oh, no, that's 625. Sorry about that. 625 times negative 3R. So we still can't do anything. But look here. What can multiply to 625 but be cubed? 125 and 5. Once you do that, is it five? Just make it sure. 125 times five is what? Um, hey Siri, what's 125 times five? Yes, okay, yeah. All right, all right. So, we can simplify that to just uh, 125 times five. Q root of both. 125 cubed is five. So you bring that outside the radical, but the negative three, are, I mean, the, the five remains in because you can't really see Q root five. Always 25. Uh, simplify that further. Uh, it turns in just to one, that turns into a five cube root of negative 15 R. And that is your solution. And now we have one more problem. I would definitely recommend to remember all of the cubes, all of the fourths, all of that stuff. So the next problem is the same thing. They both are square rooted by the same radical and the same number. Okay, so we have the square root of 3ab squared over square root 
2a to the fourth b. So, what we have here is that we can eliminate the a, just change this to a 3. Uh, we can take out the b, just change this to a 1. So we have the square root of 3b over the square root of 2a cubed. I mean, to, to, to the third. To cubed, yeah, cubed. Um, so, I mean, we can't really do anything here. So what we do do, what we do is we turn this into a, um, Doing this right? Yes, I am. Okay. So we could turn this into a fraction. Uh, we'll turn that to a fraction also. Uh, multiply it by 2a cubed 1 half, because 1 half, 1 half is a little whole. 2a cubed 1 half. So once we get that, we. We know it gets rid of the fraction of the exponent, right? Uh, so it's 3b half times 2a cubed half. Um, just 2a cubed. Okay. So they both have a common denominator again. So we could do the square root. The square root of 3b times 2a. Oh, cute, sorry. Make sure I gotta keep those subscripts in. Oh, fuck that. Sorry, parentheses. 2a cute. So, um, we could just simplify that. 6, 6a cubed b over 2a cubed screw. So it seems like we're done, but that is not this. That's not uh, the case. So what actually we can do here is we could square root this number just because it is divisible by one. So once we do that, we take the one out. So it's six a six six a b. So six a cubed over 2a cubed. So, since this is not added, multiplied, or by anything, um, we can cancel this out. So it takes that out, and that turns into a 2. So your final answer is square root of 6ab over 2a squared. And that is your solution. So hopefully y'all found this video um educated and this is part two so if you learn anything new please like subscribe and thank you for watching